Welcome back to the channel guys. Today we just have a quick little mailbag. Haven't done one in forever. First out of the box we have a filter kit for my Phantom 3. This has uh, multiple ND filters as well as a circular polarized filter. The ND filters allow me to stop the camera down and we'll get a lot lot slower shutter speeds. Uh, much better than the shutter speeds it runs at in broad daylight are really 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 fast and introduces that stuttering in the video. Uh, if we can get them down lower with an ND filter we'll get a lot more motion blur, a lot prettier video. So we'll give these a try, uh, maybe do a standalone video for these. Next up we've got a Quantum 58-2. I saw this on Amazon and I couldn't help but give it a try. This is supposed to be a 5.8 gigahertz transmitter that I can use with our little quadcopter that you saw. And actually I'm already surprised. I'm already impressed actually. This little transmitter comes with a remote SMA connection, which is perfect, exactly what I wanted. But it also comes with a mushroom style antenna on it. I'm not sure whether this is the right uh, direction matching my other antennas that I already have, but this is the size of it. I believe this is supposed to be 32 channel, correction, 40 channel, 200 milliwatt. So pretty cool little transmitter. I'm hoping that should be plenty for our little quadcopter. I'll give it a try and we'll see how it goes. I've never used one of these before, so hopefully it's uh, going to work out pretty decent. We'll see. I like the board setup and the small LCD. This is a slick looking little transmitter. If you guys, anyone watching this has any experience with one, throw it down in the comments below. I'd love to hear from you. Pretty cool looking little rig. We'll try it out. Along with that transmitter, what I did is I got another board camera. This is the Sony FEO. 700 TV line board cam. Uh, these are a really, really slick little system. I've been impressed with these. On my VersaWing and my EPP FPV, I had cheap 600 TV line board cams, like $20 range ones, and I found out there's a reason that you pay more money to have the dynamic range of these style cameras. And this one, uh, I can vouch, works really well. There's the model information. I was wrong. It is actually an 800 TV line FEO version. These things basically are so good they'll work almost in pitch darkness. Uh, you can buy them from several different sources. I won't advocate any specific one, but I think they're all very similar as long as you can actually get the one that is the FEO. As well in the box you do get the uh, the on-screen display programmer and cable so this allows you to set up the different settings in the camera which I highly recommend you do. Um, Bruce Simpson actually has a, a pretty cool tutorial on this on how to set it up I think and a few others so lots of good stuff on YouTube. Next out of the box something I've never played with before. This is called the locator light. This is a I'm going to use it for a lost model locator. What it is, and this is the first time I've had it out, is a 2.4 gigahertz transmitter and receiver system. These little tiny transmitters you stick to whatever you want to keep track of. I think they're mainly marketed for pets. And then this is your receiver that you can directionally find where the transmitter is. Being 2.4 gigahertz, um, it's pretty short wavelength, so they're pretty limited, but some people have had great success with these. And I think if I make a, a parabolic dish antenna and actually point this back into the parabola and get the focal right, I think we can drastically extend the range of these. I'm going to stick one on the Phantom. I'll do, I'm will do. i going to do a standalone video on this because let's see how far we can get with one of these. Uh, they're in the neighborhood of about 100 bucks to buy, so they're not cheap, but they are small and light. Long battery life too, so we'll give it a try. Also in the box, some props for our new little quad setup. And also a servo tester. I was going to make one of these, but to be honest, 
They're not that expensive to buy. I was going to use Arduino and make one. What we're going to do, I'm going to use this for assembling the quad and then I'll have it on hand for other uses. Assembling the quad, this is going to allow me to test the speed controls and my motor rotation to make sure I've got the motors going the right direction on the right arms before I even assemble the quad. I think it's pretty good odds that I'm probably going to have to rewire at least one. This is going to be a lot easier to do this now versus uh, way later when we have the entire CC3D and stuff inside. These aren't much. This is a Turnigy one. You can get these from Hobby King. Uh, 1 to 3S LiPo input. Pretty, pretty straightforward. It does both different uh, pulse width slash frequency uh, of the actual servos or speed control. So you got to make sure you have it on the right one. But other than that, we're going to give it a go. That's our haul for this week. Hope you guys enjoyed. I can't wait to bring you some videos on some of these items and get them out into the field and give them a try. I'm really looking forward to trying this locator. I really think that's going to be handy for my models if I do lose track of them, particularly the Phantom and my little quadcopter because they're notoriously difficult to find due to, well, the small quad size and the Phantom's distance that it flies. So, hey, if we can save a model for a hundred bucks thereabouts, totally worth it. But we'll see how it performs first. Cheers, guys. See you next video.